You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Monday the 23rd of December 2013. Dual national Britons fighting in Syria to be stripped of British citizenship. Nigel Farage embroiled in row over lack of leadership. And that Santa sign. Spanish burglar finds child sex abuse on stolen tapes and shops paedophile. US says Islamic charity officials give millions to Al-Qaeda. Thought for the day, my Christmas wishes, cooking and strangers on our shores. And finally, a soldier's carol. UK News. Dual national Britons fighting in Syria to be stripped of British citizenship. Home Secretary Theresa May intends to strip citizenship from Britons with dual citizenship who have gone to fight in Syria. The Home Secretary has so far revoked the British citizenship of 20 people this year, more than in her previous two and a half years combined. She has removed the citizenship of 37 people since May 2010, according to figures collated by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. Critics warned the practice could leave individuals at risk of torture and ill-treatment in their home countries. At least five of those who lost their nationality were born in the UK. Well to date, hip hip hooray, but that does not solve the problem of those born in Britain who are walking in the footsteps of our newest saint, Dr Abbas Khan. What does Theresa May intend to do with British-born citizens who decide to take arms in jihad at home and abroad? Nigel Farage embroiled in row over lack of leadership. Nigel Farage has become embroiled in a potentially damaging internal row over allegations that UKIP's leadership has failed to act on serious matters of governance, including taking steps to disassociate the party from a convicted paedophile. The incendiary accusations have, have seen a former prospective UKIP MEP resign from the party and led to toxic claims that the party lacks a robust system for examining internal complaints. But a UKIP spokeswoman has said the claims had no foundation, had been investigated and were the views of a disgruntled member who had failed to get the party to back his candidacy. In a letter to Farage obtained by The Observer, David Gale, interim chief executive of Kids for Cash UK, a charity that campaigns against paedophiles, said he had no choice but to resign from the party after becoming frustrated that his fears about a registered sex offender and UKIP supporter were not being taken seriously. The issue was also raised by other members of UKIP, according to emails sent to its chairman, Steve Crowther, seen by The Observer. However, the row raises questions over Farage's leadership. Considered to be the party's greatest asset, there are questions amongst UKIP grassroots members about whether Farage is focused on gaining a seat in the House of Lords. It's no secret Farage is focused on a peerage, Gale said. World at eight? Of course he is. And because the government owns him, he might just get it. Please probe UKIP's cabbie's Santa sign. A local businessman who'd been questioned by the police after he erected a large illuminated sign asking, Dear Father Christmas, all we really need is our country back. We'll not be facing any further action, Hampshire police have said. Timothy Dusty Miller, 64, who runs Hedge End-based Miller's Taxes, has erected the sign outside his house at the bottom of Sunday's Hill Botley, in full view of the passing traffic on the busy main road. Last week he explained to Ray Turner that he'd put the sign up because he wanted the UK to leave the EU and also expressed strong views on the EU Freemasonry, Catholicism and the Common Purpose Leadership Development Programme. Officers from Hampshire Constabulary visited Miller yesterday morning and he was later questioned informally. According to Mr Miller, a police officer told him they'd received quite a few, number unspecified, complaints about the sign and asked him how long he intended to display it. He was also asked if he belonged to a political party. In a statement, Hampshire Police said, We are aware of the sign and that some people have complained because they feel it may have racist connotations. We have spoken to the property owner who erected the sign and he's told us the sign reflects a political view rather than a racial one. At the wording of the sign is not in itself racist or offensive, no criminal offence is being committed. He told the Eastley News that his next sign, due to be erected just before the UK opens its borders to Bulgarian and Romanian migrants on January the 1st, would be directed at David Cameron with the message, shut the door. He has got to shut the door, said Miller. We have been swamped by every nationality. 
Miller also told Eastley News he wasn't surprised to hear from the police and that a woman had previously knocked on his door and called him an evil, nasty, obnoxious shit. But he insisted that people should not be offended by the sign. There's nothing about this sign that's racist. Everybody calls you a racist for wanting to control immigration. The cabbie said his views on immigration only reflected the opinions of the ordinary everyday people he had encountered as passengers over 40 years. That he had been born in India and he would happily employ Romanians or Bulgarians as taxi drivers. Well to date. Bless him, a case of the Bombay Ducks. European News. Spanish burglar finds child sex abuse on stolen tapes and shops paedophile. If you doubt there's an unwritten code of honour amongst criminals governing certain behaviour that's just not permitted, consider this. Please say a burglar in southern Spain who stole an old Super 8 camera and tapes from a home discovered to his horror the graphic video content of a man sexually abusing boys. The burglar put three tapes in a brown envelope, hid them under a parked car and then called police from a public phone directing them to find it. Inside the envelope police found a note with the home address of the suspected paedophile and a message from the burglar. Spanish National Police confirmed Thursday they arrested a 64-year-old suspected child molester this week at his home, the one that had been burglarised in the southern provincial capital of Jane. The suspected paedophile had reported the burglary at his home to police, listing various electrical appliances that were stolen, but he didn't mention the camera or the tapes, police said. At his home, police said they found other tapes with graphic content of sexual abuse of boys. And yes, they're still looking for the burglar, the one with the conscience, said a police officer in Jane. World date. Good for this man. Over here, they would have filmed them on their mobiles and put them on YouTube. World news. Islamic charity officials give millions to Al-Qaeda, US says. When Qatar's royal family was looking for advice on charitable giving, it turned to a well-regarded professor named Abdi al-Rahman al-Nuami. The 59-year-old educator had a stellar resume that included extensive fundraising experience and years of work with international human rights groups. But one apparent accomplishment was omitted from the list, according to US officials. Nuami also was working secretly as a financier for al-Qaeda funneling millions of dollars to the terrorist group's affiliates in Syria and Iraq, even as he led campaigns in Europe for greater freedom for Muslims. Niami was one of the two men identified by US Treasury Department officials last week as major financial backers of al-Qaeda and its regional chapters across the Middle East. Although US officials routinely announce steps to disrupt terrorist financing networks, the individuals named in the latest case are far from ordinary. Both men have served as advisers to government-backed foundations in Qatar and have held high-profile positions with international human rights groups. The second man, a Yemeni, is heavily involved in his country's US-backed political transition. Their alleged dual roles promoting humanitarian causes and civil rights while simultaneously supporting extremist groups reflect a growing challenge for counter-terrorism officials attempting to monitor the torrents of cash flowing to Islamic rebel groups in Syria, Current and former U.S. officials say, World at eight. Yup, the so-called British Packy Brigade is working towards those odds as well. Thought for the day. My Christmas wishes, cooking and strangers on our shores. I have many Christmas wishes. One, of course, is the total ban on any immigration from anywhere from January the 1st onwards into perpetuity. My Christmas wish is for the garage Farage to get his tail straight for the voting public. He's supposed to be against immigration, which makes him attractive, supposedly, for the middle-class wimps who haven't the guts to vote nationalist. But in fact, the garage is in favour of immigration, and has been quoted as saying, Let me make this clear to you. UKIP is not against immigration. We welcome immigration. We want immigration. And it's also quoted as saying that Britain should issue... 250,000 work permits a year. Well, garage, old pal. The British authorities probably do this and double, as well as all the asylum seekers, illegals and criminals who are welcomed in with open arms. Another Christmas wish is that Garage would mean what he says. He is quoted as saying that 92% of the ATM thefts are Romanian, when in fact it is the Romanians of Roma origin who are guilty. So Farage the Garage is circumspect in his immigrant theme. He welcomes all into work, which means his house, garden and car would be looked after, but doesn't care about the enriched areas where his voters might live and in which the British way of life is vanishing fast. 
What a guy. A true puppet of a true puppet government. Another wish is that they would leave poor Nigella alone. Now, I know I have suffered from acute jealousy of our Nige from time to time, and for a very good reason. Whenever I have done a bit of cooking cuisine art in a second-rate way, I look as if I've just built the Great Wall of China single-handed, and the last thing on my mind is licking the cream off a cake in a highly suggestive fashion, as it would be ignored completely, and I would just resemble an old cat who'd got the cream. So, disliking her as I do, I still feel she's got the rough end of this court case, and for no real reason other than the Saches getting into the courts. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't Nigella on trial, was it? Or was it? The two European scrotes who looked like relations to the Romas were on trial and should have been found guilty, if only for looking as if they earned barely the minimum wage in the UK while spending inordinate amounts of someone else's money. Now let me get this point over. Regarding drugs. Like booze, gambling or illicit sex, someone, somewhere, is always doing it. And if I had been married to Saatchi, who looks like a very bad-tempered guy, I would need a proper opium hooker at the side of our bed every night, and all night, and would have been plugged in during the day as well, so good luck to her. Everyone finds a way of handling nasty things in the due course of their lifetimes, it's nature. Of course, in the true modern techie age, all this backbiting would not have had the effect it did without the media, and a blogger called Richard Hillgrove, who has some sort of relationship with Charlie Boy. All very nasty and ungentlemanly, but what can you expect from a pig but a grunt, even a kosher one? So, horrible flying monkeys to Charles on Christmas Eve or Hanukkah. This Christmas wish you will either love or hate. All the Pakistanis who are called British stand up, walk to the cliffs of Dover and jump off. Including the family of the sodding Muslim doctor who entered a country of war, not under Médecins de saint Frontières, but without a visa, like all the other British Pakistani rebels over there, and was arrested after 48 hours. He was treated in the same way the Syrian rebels treat Syrian Christians. So why the hell should we, or this weak government, weep and wail? Why should we concern ourselves when we don't bother about our own people kidnapped and killed by Muslim pirates and jihadists? Get real and get behind your own country and its people, Camoran. Any more than the 37-year-old British whatever and a mental age of seven was over here in the first place to be made pregnant so that yet another Pakistani can have a family life in our country. When are we going to realise these people, or the vast majority of them, in their own communities, are outbreeding us as we speak? And they will use any means to do so. The papers eager to put Muslim sexual grooming of our underage children in this same category as this are wrong. Do you know this so-called family have carers, probably paid for by our taxpayers, because she's a retard and can barely communicate with the husband, who it is thought broke her jaw at one time. This, along with the national debt, their local council will have to rehouse these bastards in separate houses at your expense, whilst refusing the same rights to young white couples in the same position. It is the entire wicked clan of this woman who should be deported and deported now back to Pakistan. Another Christmas wish. My final Christmas wish is that all the shopkeepers, councils, libraries, towns and businesses who didn't put up any Christmas decorations at all should be soundly whipped. I include the supermarkets in this as well, although I haven't been in Waitrose. At our local Hanukkah-owned Tesco, they do at least have a cardboard tree stuck at the end of each till. It's around a foot high, so it's really memorable. We went into Alton last week, and after seeing no lights at all on the high street, we went into the large local Café Nero, and were surprised to see no decorations there either. On the way out, I asked the barista where were the Christmas decks, and he pointed to a small pile of coloured balls, if you would excuse that expression, on a shelf behind the coffee maker, almost totally invisible. I told him the, the franchisees should be ashamed, and it was a load of bollocks. But on my journeys that day, I had my eyes open to the extent of enrichment down in Hampshire, which is, after all, not exactly the hub of the universe. All but one, boots were staffed, owned or rented to Indians or Pakistanis. One, Holland and Barrett, I walked out of because the only girl behind the counter wore a hijab. No deal there, mateys. So put this with the fact that at least three generations of children have been brought up with the self, me and I culture 
and not with the spirit of sending Christmas cards, buying presents for other members of the family, spending time with relations they might not like because it would ruin their Christmas, and we are always told our Christmases must not be ruined, lack of traditions and culture, and we truly have lost generations who identify Christmas with very little other than special makeup, clothes, partying, or stuck in front of the goggle box, spaced out on whatever. Put this with the fact that we, the English, have ruined our own high streets by refusing to move arse from seat in front of PC to actually go round the sodding shops, and the council are busy letting these shops out to immigrants to run who have no interest other than money at our Christian and pagan festival. And you can see what road we're headed down, a form of Muslim utopia funded by us. I haven't seen a manger, the Christ child, anything pertaining to the real meaning of our Christmas, and we only have ourselves to blame, along with, of course, immigration. Most, if not all, our immigrants over the past 40 years have not been Christian, and we have only seen a few thousand Christians coming in with the Poles and some other Europeans, which, of course, our own existing Pakistani and Indian immigrants don't like. They have this in common with Farage the Garage as well. But this year is the first year I have not seen seasonal decorations in the high streets or in the shops. One way to discourage Asians and other foreigners taking over our high street shops is to make sure the women wear antlers for the entire season of December over their hijabs, burqas, whatever, and the men have to wear Santa costumes. All supermarkets should be heavily decorated with a manger and all, and frankly, I don't give a damn if anyone objects, whether they be atheist or Muslim. They can shuffle off back to the hole they came out of, for all I care. A point worth noting is that these days, when all the decorations are made in China, that is the only Chinese crap that doesn't seem to shift in the shops, which are full to busting of Christmas goods that aren't selling. Christmas should be brought back in all its maudlin, soppy glory. Expense accounts should be as well. Firms' parties should be as riotously unpolitically correct as before, when, if young, you stood to get your bum pinched or worse, and if you wanted to, you could photocopy your arse on the nearest rank Xerox. You can have Jim Davison tapes with the ever-lovely Chalky, and all the proper Christmas hymns will be belting out over the tannoy, and through all the shops driving everyone mad, and Bing's White Christmas would be allowed, and in fact, de rigueur. All the small towns and villages would vie with each other to have the most decorations, and churches would be full on Christmas Eve with families. I don't care if this is not your Christmas wish. It is mine, all mine. What we need in this country is discipline over our own people and habits, not a sneering, complacent youth who've been brought up on TV and has-beens with no pride and no religious teachings. What they have been dragged up with is a sense of superiority of self and the right to choose all the time, even when it comes to duty and family. Most of our Muslim immigrants don't suffer this within their families, and they are right. Duty to family is duty. Religion is religion and must be observed on special occasions, and a united front is something that our young mistake for football or Xboxes. I'm a Christian, albeit a sinner, but I believe, and without belief, mankind is doomed. There were no atheists on the Titanic, my friend. I have a saying I hope you like. A man who undertakes the journey of life without hope rarely reaches his destination. Christmas time is a time of hope and must never be overlooked or allowed to vanish. Not in my country and not on my watch. And finally, a soldier's carol. Twas the night before Christmas he lived all alone in a one-bedroom house made of plaster and stone. I'd come down the chimney with presents to give and to see just who in this home did live. I looked all about, a strange sight I did see, no tinsel, no presents not even a tree. No stockings by the mantel, just boots filled with sand. On the wall hung pictures of far distant lands. With medals and badges, awards of all kinds, a sober thought came through my mind. For this house was different, it was dark and dreary. I found the home of a soldier, once I could see clearly. The soldier lay sleeping, silent, alone, curled up on the floor in this one-bedroom home. The face was so gentle, the room in disorder, not how I pictured a true British soldier. Was this the hero of whom I just read, curled up on a poncho, the floor for a bed? I realised the families that I saw this night owed their lives to these soldiers who were willing to fight. 
Soon round the world the children would play and grown-ups would celebrate a bright Christmas day. They all enjoyed freedom each month of the year because of the soldier, like the one lying here. I couldn't help wonder how many lay alone on a cold Christmas Eve in a land far from home. The very thought brought a tear to my eye. I dropped to my knees and started to cry. The soldier awakened and I heard a rough voice. Santa don't cry, this life is my choice. I fight for freedom, don't ask for more. My life is my God, my country, my core. The soldier rolled over and drifted to sleep. I couldn't control it, I continued to weep. I kept watch for hours so silent and still, and we both shivered from the cold night's chill. I did not want to leave on that cold dark night, this guardian honour so willing to fight. Then the soldier rolled over with a voice soft and pure, whispered, But carry on, Santa, it's Christmas Day, all is secure. One look at my watch and I knew he was right. Merry Christmas, my friend, and to all. A good night. That poem was written by a peacekeeping soldier stationed overseas, and I believe it says it all. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and I and the team at World at Eight and Radio Britain wish you all a very happy Christmas and an even more prosperous New Year. We will be celebrating Christmas in true British style, lots of booze, but hangovers permitting, we will be with you Friday the 27th of December for the news and in the new year, Friday the 3rd of January 2014. In the words of Tiny Tim, and a Merry Christmas one and all, and may the new year bring you all you wish yourselves. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I should have some bells there, but I haven't. Happy Christmas. <laughs>